Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. If you are at all interested in books or reading, then you're probably aware of a rise in challenges to certain books in certain parts of the country lately. Some individuals and also conservative groups have been targeting books mostly dealing with race or gender or sexuality to get them pulled from school curriculums and library shelves. It's a big deal, and it doesn't seem to be going away, so we're going to spend this whole week, actually, talking to a few authors who've gotten their books banned. It can seem theoretical, maybe, if it's not happening in your county or your school district, but something Ashley Hope Perez says in today's interview really struck me. Her book is titled Out of Darkness, and it's been contested numerous times by parents. But she tells NPR's Rob Schmitz how it's really less about her book and more about the fear instilled in every school librarian and how now every time they pick a book to put on their shelves, they've got to balance the needs of their students with the possible political ramifications. Support for NPR and the following message come from Live Right, publishers of The Poll by J.M. Coetze. The Nobel Prize-winning author presents a new novel of Spain, music, and the bold power struggle between two lovers. The Poll by J.M. Coetze, available wherever books are sold. Support for this podcast and the following message come from the Southern Environmental Law Center and its podcast, Broken Ground. If awareness drives environmental action, what happens when traditional news outlets disappear? This season on Broken Ground, meet the environmental storytellers reimagining how people get their news. New episodes available wherever you listen to podcasts. Out of Darkness is a historical novel set in 1937 in the oil-rich region of East Texas. A natural gas leak caused an explosion at a school, killing nearly 300 students and teachers. Ashley Hope Perez uses this backdrop to tell a fictional story of what was, back then, considered a forbidden love between an African-American boy and a Mexican-American girl. It's a story about race, power, and class. When it came out in 2015, it received wide recognition in young adult literature. But last year, it started to get pulled from some libraries when a parent at a Texas school board meeting complained about sexually explicit content. Video of that parent's rant went viral and turned into a nightmare for the author. Perez says her book was taken out of context, much like other books that have been targeted by conservative groups. We have seen over and over that the uh, sexual content is a pretext. You know, folks know they cannot show up to a school board meeting in 2022 and say, I don't want queer kids in my kids' class. The paperback version of Out of Darkness exposes the racial backgrounds of the central characters. There's a a black boy and a Mexican-American girl on the front. You hold that book up and say, um, this is disgusting pornographic trash. And you are telegraphing a powerful message to students who share those identities, right? Perez says book banning, as it's unfolding right now, is really not about the actual books. Oftentimes, parents calling for book bans haven't even read the material. The books are a tool, she says, that become part of a coordinated strategy for signaling opposition to certain identities. The book banners and and the spaces where they share information and they say, show up, say this, they're very clear. I even have seen a Facebook post that someone shared with me where... The poster is explicitly reminding people, don't talk about race or sexual orientation. Remember, you have to focus on the sexual content. Texas has the most book bans of any state, according to PEN America, which advocates for freedom of expression. By PEN America's official count, Perez tells me that her book has been banned 29 times. Out of Darkness, like many works of literature, engages with all kinds of aspects of human experience. And as a literature professor myself, I can tell you that, um, you know, literature from the Bible to Chaucer to Shakespeare um, to Faulkner deals with difficult topics because those aspects of life are um, the material of literature. You know, it's not uh, to be provocative or to distress anyone, but because it's when we want to write about human experience honestly and completely, we have to include the pain of being a person. Uh, and so I think that in many ways, what book banners in the present moment are um, suggesting is that literature that honestly engages human experience is somehow inappropriate for teenagers. 
You became a published author after years of teaching high school English. And you said you wanted to give your students the books they said they wanted to read, but that they couldn't find. Uh, What kind of books did your students feel were missing from their library? Well, anybody who knows a teenager or loves a teenager knows they're a little self-centered. They wanted books about themselves. You know, my first my first novel was basically about my students. You know, it was a the main character was a composite of many of my of my students. And my second novel is also set in Houston, where I taught. Um, with Out of Darkness, I was trying to do something a little bit different, which was to write the historical novel that. Um, readers like my students wouldn't be able to put down a historical novel that though being about the past would seem powerfully resonant with their lives. And I think that um, in Out of Darkness, for example, I engage the histories of school segregation in Texas, not just the ways that schools were segregated to separate Black Americans and white American students, but also what happened to Mexican-American kids or anyone who was didn't fit into those categories. So, you know, Texas had, quote-unquote, Mexican schools um, that were unequal in different ways and some in some ways more damaging. And my students didn't know that history. So I thought without a darkness about what my former students would want uh, in a book about the past so that it would speak to them now. And a lot of what they wanted was honesty, not to see things sugar-coated or sanitized. I'm curious, um, after the viral video and and the controversy over uh, not only your book, but many other books that have been called to be banned, especially in Texas— has this led to more publicity for your book? Has it led to better sales? I, I'm I'm curious if it's having uh, an effect that the people who are seeking to ban your book uh, would not want, uh, that it's having the reverse effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're getting the effects that they want because at the end of the day, whether a copy of my book is returned to the library bookshelf, so long as the librarian in a school is positioned to no longer feel confident that they can make decisions about what books to include based on the needs of students, the book banners have won. Because the censorship that is currently coming from outside, the goal is to implant that in the librarians and educators themselves. And it's working extremely well in places like Texas, where this is happening more than anywhere else. There will be people who buy the book because of hearing this interview. But for the hundreds of authors whose works have been banned but who haven't been interviewed on NPR, um, this can be career-ending. I mean, losing access to school and library markets can be career-ending for authors. And since these bans are overwhelmingly targeting people, um, you know, authors of color and authors with other marginalized identities, this is a real threat to the modest progress we've made in diversifying children's literature and literature for young adults. That's Ashley Hope Pettis. She's assistant professor of comparative studies at Ohio State University and the author of Out of Darkness and other novels. Ashley, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. This message comes from NPR sponsor, Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Sell without needing to code or design. Just bring your best ideas and Shopify will help you open up shop. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash NPR.